God so that you can be mature to be able to know that which is yours to be able to know that which the Lord has given to you if you don't progress in God you can progress in life but to progress in life is to understand the dealings of God I want to progress. Thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Father. I want to progress in you. I want to progress in you. In Jesus mighty name we pray. How many of you know that God is a record breaker? And when God wants to break record, he doesn't do it by muscles. He does it by word. So God will look at an entire family and he will say that this is, this is Abraham. With his parent from the awe of childings and he will say, come Abraham, I want to make out of your life something that no one had ever imagined. So God will break the record. The first record he broke is what we will look into today. God will break the record. God is a record breaker. And when God wants to break record, Honestly speaking, all he needs is just for you to obey him and to follow him. It doesn't take God anything to pedestal you above and among your men. No, it doesn't take God anything. It doesn't take God anything. Maybe, maybe you think that your fasting is what generates the things that happen in your life. I'm telling you, it's not your fasting. Your fasting is just for your own sake. So that you'll be able to come into alignment to obey what God is saying. The greatest price has been paid. Let me tell your neighbor, the greatest price has been paid. Jesus died and paid. So every time you fast to generate power. Huh? I'm not against you fasting to generate power. But in my little work with God, I've come to realize that there are certain powers you carry. They are not product of fasting. They are product of persecution. The anointings will come upon you that the reason why God will give you that grace is because when men rose up against you, hmm, where you had every right to slap, you held your peace. Where you had every right to go to social media and do a disclaimer to say that they lied against you. And indeed you have evidence to prove that they lied. And God said to you, hold your peace. And you held your peace. God will say, for doing this, for my sake, take this anointing. There was a man in this country, or there is a man in this country, going for crusades and he, the wife died. And I think his children. I'm talking about Umar Bai. When he came out of that experience, God said, what do you want? So I said, I, I don't know. God said, from today, you will do miracles without struggle take angels no it wasn't the product of fasting it was a product of what persecution you know the way Jesus came into that eternal name he came into eternal name by shame in case you don't know when he saw the shame and he saw the glory he despised the shame that is what it means to progress when I say progress I'm not saying you should buy the next jeep I mean, I'm, I'm talking about progressing in God because if you progress in God the mundane things that you seek will seek after you God will begin to put things if you follow God he will honor your life seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and these other things somebody say things when you follow the person of Christ things will be added to you. When you follow the person, the things will be added. So God expects us to progress in him. 
when I'm with my friends, particularly the ones we pray together, I don't judge them, but I, I, I listen to the prayer utterance to see, is this person progressing at all? Because you don't hold on to one style of prayer every year, every week. If you are predictable as a believer, you are not progressing. If you are predictable as a believer, you are not progressing. If you are in your office and they say, ah, this thing that you did, if boss should come, this is, you are in trouble. Then you, indeed you came and everywhere went ballistic. They said, we told you, this is the way he behaves. You are not like a wind. Because the man of the spirit is like a wind. He blow it. You feel the effect of the wind. You never can tell where it's coming from. But there is effect. Somebody say effect. Yes, there is effect. Because when you are in an environment... <laughs> Oh, uh, you see, the cold here in Nigeria it comes with breeze. Sure, you know. But when you travel out, no breeze. No breeze. What what you feel is effect. You just turn everywhere. I did one video when I traveled. They thought I was doing guy. They thought I was doing a physique. They didn't know that I was on. I was cold. So I was shaking like this and I was talking. And people thought I was just trying to be a homeboy. But the truth was I was shaking. I was catching cold. I was feeling the effect. That's how the mind, the life of a spiritual man is. When you are a politician and they can predict you, you are in trouble. My friend, honorable, will now be angry that I've started. So we are spiritual people. And the way not to be predictable is to begin to journey into God, to progress into God. So in John chapter 4, for example, Jesus said there is need that we pass through Samaria. All protocols observe. I'm already in my message. And Jesus said to her, he said to his people, I'm hungry, I'm famished, I'm wearied. But we need to go to the other side. But before we go to the other side, there is need for us to pass through Samaria. There is need for us to pass through Samaria, he said in John chapter 4. So they got to a place. He released them and Jesus sat by a well. Somebody say a well. You know the thing of this program is, oh, test and see that the Lord is good. So you can go to John chapter 4. And Jesus sat by the well. Now in Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. Jesus sat on a well. And when he sat on that well, it was about the sixth hour. Somebody say the sixth hour. Okay, so you need to follow me because I operate in the prophetic. So I interpret scriptures prophetically. I, have, I may not do all the theological presentations, but I will draw out the muscles from the scripture for you. It was a well. And this well at this time was recorded to be Jacob's well. Somebody say Jacob's well. Mm. And then there was a time that in the life of Isaac, Isaac dug wells. He went to redig the well of his father. Because you cannot do anything without the impute of fathers. So the Bible says there is a generation that knoweth not his fathers. And what do they do to their fathers? They curse them. That is a well that they drank from. The well of dishonor. The well that seemed to want to relegate every work that the fathers have done. You see, whatever revelation we flow with today, whoever you are in the body of Christ, without the foundations that they give to us, we wouldn't have dug deep. So Jesus Christ happened to be another well. So there was a well sitting by another well. Jesus is a well. And it happens to be that the well of Jacob is a physical well. But the well of Jesus is eternal. It carries with it the supply of both the physical and the spiritual. Because when he sat down there... He wanted to drink water. Not only did he want to drink water, he wanted to eat food. Somebody say food. You know, you know, you know, God ate from us. 
God never ate from us until he gave us. He fed us first before we fed him. The Bible says a man ate what? Angel's meal. So there is this food that is spiritual. There is this bread that is uncommon. There is this bread that we all don't have access to, but we all should have access to it. We all, what? Don't have access to it, yet we all should have access to it. That is the intention of God. God never created man with the intention of hiding himself from him. But the way that God will unveil himself to us is going to be determined by our hunger. Because hunger is a currency in the spirit. That is the only currency you can use to make withdrawal in the presence of the Lord. If you are going to be hungry, God will keep filling you up. But the day you say you are full, then the oil will cease. And she said, give me another vessel that I might pour oil into it. They said to her that no more vessel. Immediately they said no more vessel. What happened? The oil stopped. The point at which the flow of God's currency, the flow of God's spiritual capital, we stop flowing into your direction is the point to which you stop being hungry. So Jesus sat at that well. And this happened to be at the sixth hour. The number six is a representation of man. It's a representation of what man can achieve for himself, what man can do for himself. So when Jesus came there and he sat there, it was deliberate that Jesus sat there because a, a, a test, test is about to be carried out. Somebody say test, test. Yes, there's a, there is a test that is about to be carried out. We, there is a comparison that is about to take place from that scripture. So he sat down there waiting for someone that will come give him water. At the sixth hour, at the very hour of man, there are two aspects in the book of John that Jesus Christ gave us very, very powerful similitudes and very um, um, detailed, detailed information about the operations and the working abilities of the Holy Spirit. This is one of them. And the second place where he gave us that layer was at the marriage supper. How many of you might remember the marriage supper? Where they brought wine and after they drank the wine, they finished drinking and then the best wine came. That was showing us, that was telling us about, that also was a taste test. You know the Bible said, taste and see that the Lord is what? Good. You know, the reason why you will have to taste and see is because you have been tasting other things before. You've tasted a babe before. You've tasted heroin before. You've tasted sex before. You've tasted cocaine before. You've tasted marijuana before. If you're like me, you've tasted clubbing before. If you're like me, you've tasted sleeping around with women. You've tasted something. So he said, you now test me and see. You won't see until you compare. The seeing is a knowing. The reason why you will be able to know is because you have tasted both sides. So he said, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's not that God is good, though, that the Lordship of God is good. You will have to understand God from his lordship. You will have to understand that when you test and you see that he's good, he will become a dictator to you. He will begin to dictate. Why? Because he said in the book of Romans, they that are led by the spirit of God, they are the ones permitted to be the sons of God. So one of the hallmark of being a son is being led. So he sat down there. Give me the next verse. Abiola, don't forget yourself. Now come at a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew, accept me, accept drink of me, which I'm a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samarians. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Mm -hmm. What 
what's going on now? Is he sleeping? The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Kai. Kai. Somebody say the well is deep. This thing is a distraction for me. Say the well is deep. Jesus came to where they are going to fetch. You remember the scripture that says in the book of Isaiah? It said, by joy shall ye fetch. From what? The wells of salvation. So, one of the ways to taste is by joy. We don't, we don't access God by being emotional. We access God by being joyful. So she said to him, how do you want to drink of this water? You've been sitting down here before I arrived and you are asking me for water that you want to drink. And this well is deep. You remember the scripture that says deep call it unto what? Yeah. The well of Jacob is not shallow. When God was drilling the well of Jacob, the well of the fathers was never shallow. Help me tell your neighbor, don't be a shallow Christian. Mm. Help me tell your neighbor, don't be a shallow Christian. Listen guys, we've got to do business in deep waters. That's our destination. That's who we are. Even our fathers were not shallow, they were deep. She said to him, the well you want to fetch from is deep. But this is not about the depth. The thing is, I just want to drink. All right? If I drink, I'll be fine. But the only way you can drink is that you need a fetcher. You need a handle to be able to pull or draw water from this well. And he said to her, If you know he that asks you to give, the gift of God at this time is a gift of God. I'm requesting for you to give me water. You know, sometimes the level of our depth, if I want to know you, I don't need to see you study. I need to hear you pray. Your prayer will tell me who you are. There are prayers that are beggarly. Oh God, Father, Huh. You will hear things like, oh God, please now. Father, please, I beg you. I'm not against that too. I beg God. And I know when I do it. Because God has given me three levels of boldness. Number one boldness he gave me is boldness to approach him. So he said, we, we come to the throne of grace. What? Mm, so God is not expecting you to come to him being afraid. One, he gave me boldness to approach him. I have unfettered access to be able to express myself without inferiority complex. I have unfettered access. I have open door to come and tell him, you know what? <laughs> lust is disturbing me now as I'm praying with you, to you. There is lust in my member. I am not, you are not, you are not a non-entity when you do that. See, I am married. I went out today, Lord, and am my eyes straight. You see, this one is not the Holy Spirit pointing you to it. You are the one telling him. You know why? Because you have tasted and you have seen that God can be judged faithful. You see, it is only God that will uncover you and yet not uncover you. Only God. So when options were given to David, choose to whom we should release you to. Either to the people to deal with you. Huh? To who again? To, huh? to his enemies. Where did he fall to? <laughs> he said, God, he knows that if he falls to his enemies, his bones will not come down. His bones, when, when he gets to the battle array, his bones will not, will not touch the floor. There will be an expert that will, that will use the javelin and, and, and crack the rib. And the way he's cracking it, everything will become biscuit. 
So God is the only one that can uncover you and yet not uncover you. God is the only uninvited guest. Huh? God is, I mean, God is the only invited guest that will come to your house and he will undress you before your face. Meanwhile, you are the one that invited him. Because he said, I stand by the door and I knock. If you open your heart, I will come in. When he comes in, he will begin to undress you. He's the only one that can do that. Not even your wife. If your wife begins to do that, you tell her, hey woman, I'm the head of this house. Alright? So, God began to administer his grace to this lady. And the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? So God has given us the ability to approach him. Boldness to approach him has been given to me. Number two, boldness to express myself before him has been given to me. And number three, boldness against Satan. So, the boldness to express myself is where I begin to approach God in prayer of petition. Huh? The boldness to approach God is when I approach him as my father, as a friend, because every child of God is a star. Every child of God is a son. Every child of God is a servant. Every child of God is a steward of true resources. Did you get that? Every child of God is what? A son. Every child of God is what? A star. Every child of God is what? A steward. Every child of God is what? A son. You will pass. You will pass through these gates in the spirit. They are there. You will transit each of these gates. Times will come where you will operate as a servant. Times will come where you will operate as a star. Where is he that is born the king of the Jews? For we have seen what? His star. And then in being stars, we have shooting stars. I'm not a shooting star. How many of you know that Satan is a star? He's a shooting star. But you are a shining star. You move from one level of effusions of excellence to another. You move from servant to becoming a son. Why are you a son? Because you are a joint heir. You are a joint heir with him. I came with my message. It was Reverend Sam that opened this distance here and I decided to follow him. So I will touch my main message tomorrow morning. And I may dive into it. You will not know. So this is... There is a test here. There is a test here. The test here is the test of drinking water versus living water. What is the, te the test? The test is drinking water versus what? Living water. That is why I said you cannot attain, you will not know it until you taste it. So the woman went from theory into reality, not practical. She moved the heart of Jesus from theory. See, Oga, this thing you are saying, you want to give me living water. You don't even have what it takes to draw. So, the first thing to realize here, when it comes to the issue of the taste test, the first thing is, what fetcher do you have? Because you must draw. Oh my God, am I losing you? Am I losing you? So she said to him, you don't have anything to draw. I am willing to give you this water. So the question is, if it's the issue of drawing, cast your mind back. She came to fetch water. 
Would she have gotten there without a fetcher? So she wasn't talking about honorary fetching equipment. Because she has a fetcher to fetch. But this man is introducing living water. He's introducing a spirit. And because he's, he's introducing a spirit, that spirit will have to condition that entire conversation. That for you to be able to drink from this well, you will need a fetcher. And she's beginning to realize that this man is not just an ordinary man that has appeared right on this well. And don't forget, I said to you that Jesus is a well sitting by what? Another well. And this well that he's sitting on, he was sitting on it at the sixth hour. At the hour of humanity. Because six is a representation of what? Humanity. Flesh. Man. Because man was created on the sixth day. So, you get it now? I know you are trying to look for scripture. I saw your eyes. Have I answered you now? Aha. Uh -huh. Man was created on the sixth day. So, six is a symbol of man. That is why you will see that in the end time, what, what the crescendo of the end time operation is what? Six, six, six. When man and the peace we want to operate. I'm entering different apertures. So if you are going to follow me, if you are going to relate with me, there's going to be a taste test. So number one, I need a fetcher to be able to fetch. Give me the next scripture. Can you help me locate what that guy is doing? Please, replace him. I refuse to be deflected. Stand up. Let me see you, guy. What are you doing there? Can you follow, follow my message? Please. Are thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself? and his children and his cattle. Let's go on. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall what? Test again. So the first test is that um, when you drink this water, what will you do? So this is showing us a limitation of this taste. Remember I said to you, it is what? Taste test. That's the title of my message. The taste test. Because if you drink of this water, you are going to test again. You see, let me give you an example. So many young people have been married for close to 13 years now. So, so many young people, when you tell them that let there be rapture, the ones that have not been to that side will say, no, there should be no rapture. The thing is, there is a taste. They want to taste. They want to be able to touch that side. We have babies here, so if you know, you know. All right? They want to have that ecstasy. They want to have that hmm, experience, as it were. So you hear them say, no, let there be no rapture. Ah, wait till happen. But you will suddenly realize that when you taste it, you will test again. And then when you stay in it long enough, a time will come when they tap you, you will say no. The woman will tap you, say, Kai, I'm not thinking of this again because in marriage there are three layers. Number one layer, one is ecstasy. Somebody say ecstasy. When her figure shocks you, when his body build shocks you, when you are going to office and you, are, you can't wait to come back home, you are thinking of all of that. That's exercise season. You are enjoying it. And exercise season may last for like 10 years. Because within that bracket of 10 years, another season will open. Responsibility. Somebody say responsibility. So you move away from the bracket of... You know we are talking about taste. Follow me. We are talking about taste. So you move from where your hand is touching and your, your tongue is kissing. And you know, you are doing all of these things to the place where they will tell you as you are coming back, Similac has finished. We need diaper. 
You will move from there, then they will tell you, me, I cannot continue this thing. Oh. You need to put him in daycare. That's responsibility. Then you hear issues of this one car is not enough. And if you think one car is enough, you'll be entering bus. I'll be driving this car with the baby. Then no boy you will make you say no. Because it's your child. You move from that responsibility stage. In that responsibility stage, that is when your parent will call you. Samo! Add one more. Say, I know, mommy, I'm not doing no. Then your mom will say, if that they born one, I for born you. <laughs> if they are giving birth to one child, will I have given birth to you because the last time I checked, you had a fault? You will not tell her, mommy, times have changed. Responsibility. Why? The man is thinking of school fees. Am I communicating with you? He's, he has tasted. Now the result of his tasting is curtailing his appetite. So he will be checking and say, babe, how far? Are your eggs for me? She say yes. He will, he will zip up. <laughs> because he, he doesn't want what? Responsibility. The taste board is being controlled by life situation. So he said, taste! And what? See. Because every time you taste, you will come to a knowing. Every time you taste, you will come to a knowing. And that is what sex is. Sex is not sex. In the Bible, we don't call it sex. And Adam knew his wife. His intimacy is knowing. You taste is, is a relationship, is a fellowship, is koinonia. You taste and you see that the Lord, he is good. So, Jesus says that and said to her, whosoever drink of this water shall taste again. So, you see, no matter how you like sex, you will now not go too further. Because you are afraid of responsibility. So you see, you move from what? Ecstasy to what? Responsibility. The third one is, you move from responsibility to legacy. You begin to think about what will become of my life. What will be the signature of my life around these children? Because they are going to be an extension of your name. So what you want to ensure is that they carry your name and they what? carry it well. So the father also has a name that he gave to his son and he said if anybody will access me to know that I am God, he will have to taste Christ my son and it is through this Christ that he will make his request and is upon the request through this name that I will ratify it, I will veto it, I will allow it passage because Jesus' name is the quality control in Christendom. That name is the quality control. So here, he was bringing that quality to bear. And he said to her, if you drink of this water, you will yet test again. If you drink of this water, you will yet what? Test again. Meaning that when we talk about test and see that the Lord is good, it's not in materiality. are not synonymous to God's goodness. God's goodness is synonymous to God's nature. It's by his nature we know his goodness. Because infidel, they buy cars. More than the one you drive. They have the fast cars. We're in 2020, what now? Some of them have ordered for the 2022. Right now, he's already in their garage. So I say, oh Lord, oh Lord, I want to taste and see. God will say, what kind of taste do you want? Is it the one that when you drink, you will hunger again? Is it the one that when you drink, you will hunger again? You remember the young, the rich young ruler? He was rich. He was full. He was not hungry again. And God said, because you are not hungry again. Man, help me tell your neighbor, hunger is a currency. And for a long time, you have been hungry for the, long, for the wrong things. Your hunger is not propelling you towards God. Your hunger is propelling you towards other things. 
And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall test again. Okay, bro, give me the next scripture. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never test. Of this water that I shall give him shall never test. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up in everlasting life. Uh huh. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I test not, neither come. What? Tear to draw. She doesn't want to come and draw anymore because Jesus Christ has simply, one of the things that Jesus did here in order to bring this woman to where he is was to upgrade her taste board. Somebody say taste board. And the way he upgraded it was not by giving her to drink first, was to first show her a reality, was to first open her up to a measure in him, to first allow her to see the possibilities that there is in Christ. Many of us are sitting by the well, but we've not been able to drink from that well. What does that mean? You speak in the Holy Ghost, but you don't draw the benefit of the Spirit. Many young people today speaking in Holy Ghost is like a cliche. Hey, Janamando. If I put three young people here and we pray in tongues when, when we finish, if I ask them, what did you receive? They'll tell you that, ah, Pastor Austin. You said we should pray in the Holy Ghost. I was just enjoying myself. That is what it means to sit by a well. And we waste spiritual resources. Because most of the time, you are not a waiter. You are a speaker. Meanwhile, what God wants you to do is to be both a speaker and what? A waiter. Because as you speak in the Holy Ghost, he said you, off, you speak mysteries unto him. Then there is another department of the Holy Ghost that is called the interpretation of what? Tongues. And there is a part that says, be still and know that I am God. This is how we journey in God. This is how we taste. Before I came, for example, I was on my own agenda. I said, okay, um, I mean, this is the end of the year. Tomorrow is Monday morning, right? And RC and Lagos normally have its meeting, her meeting on Mondays. And I was told that um, our last meeting for the year is this week, Monday. You know it's natural for me to be with my people for the end of the year. Don't you think so? Just like Pastor Sam is with, with you guys now for the end of the year meeting. So when they told me, I quickly called Reverend Sam. I said, oh God, there's a challenge. He said, what? I said, I'll only be able to do this night with you tomorrow morning and I'll catch the flight to Abuja. That was day before yesterday. And he said, no challenge. I said, okay, so I'll book my flight now. So I asked them to change the flight. When I spoke to them to change the flight, I felt a little bit of restriction. When I felt that restriction, I sent a message to my pastor. I said, hold on. The early hours of the morning, I went into my clothes and I was praying. I was just speaking in tongues. Lord, I worship you. Thank you, Father. You see, I was doing that. I'm waiting for him to talk. I'm waiting to receive. Because God, the, the lines of communication are not, is not complete until he gives feedback. Mm. If you keep praying and there is no feedback, you 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 will not do you will not you will not do profiting business with God. God is an answering God. When you dial your number, He picks. Most times you don't wait to hear Him respond back, so you don't taste. What you do is you are just a partaker of religion. You don't allow him to speak back to you. I want to be as basic as possible with you since he has opened it. You've got to receive feedback. So as I was saying, dear Lord, thank you. I heard, stay back. He said, stay back where? He says, stay in Abuja for the meeting. For what reason, I don't know. So I told, I sent a message to Reverend Sam. I will stay back. I sent you the message, right? I said I will stay back. But I didn't tell you this story. The person I told was Reverend Gideon. 
you know what? I didn't go to pray that, Lord, should I stay or should I, shouldn't I stay? I went to do fellowship. But as I was doing fellowship, he gave what? Feedback. Today, if they ask you to pray, you will just stand. Everywhere will be shaking. When you are done, we will ask you, what do you bring from there? Nothing. The realm is not empty. They give. They are seeking for who to give. But you don't, you rush in. Sometimes it's a show, actually. And sometimes you want to show us the dexterity of your tongue. How capitalized they are. Some will show us how fiery they are. Some will show us how redematic they are. Some will show us how ascending they are. You will hear things like, You are not ascending. You are not ascending. I'm ascending. They are here. What have you received that they are here? What have you tested? Because if you speak in English, you will speak back to you in English. I remember one day, I was praying, bah, 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 bah. I just heard my native name, Okyoto Doro. I stopped. I said, so, so you the hear Robo too? <laughs> you mean you can speak Robo? Why have you not been speaking to me in Robo? I said, I spoke to you today to let you know how serious this matter is. And that day I heard my name. It was in relating, in relating to my marital life. Many of you today, ha, ba, 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 ba. why are you not married? Um, God is, um, God have not spoken, is a lie. You were speaking in tongue for long, the day he wanted to tell you. You didn't pause. You didn't, you, you didn't, you, you didn't pause. You didn't stay, you didn't stay still. There are many times that when you are praying in the spirit, many of you will be praying in the language of the Holy Ghost and, and as you are praying that way, there is an English utterance. Permit me to use that word. There is English utterance precipitating in your spirit rather than to pause. Huh? Pause. Take a pen and write that thing down because that thing that is coming to your heart is a compass. That is what you will need to navigate the next phase. You are praying and then a language is coming into your spirit. Be it, lang be it Yoruba, be it French, be it ethic, whatever it is, you were receiving interpretation of what you are saying. You only did not work on it because, and now that you didn't work on it, you forgot when you finished praying. So, spiritual administration wasted. And it happens to be that administration has been willed to Christ, the Lord. So this woman said unto him, give me this water that I test not. I don't want to test anymore. In fact, I just only don't want to test, you know what? I don't want to travel to this river to drink anymore. I don't, if, if there is this water that I can drink and it will quench my thirst forever. <laughs> Excuse me. Let this one see. I'm okay. So when she met a superior taste, when she was shown a superior line and God had worked on her her test board she was willing to give up any other thing to pursue that well I remember some years ago I was praying I was trained as an intercessor every other gift met me there I prophesied on my knees to nations I called names of people before I began to call names on the hall. I received China. I received names of Chinese people. I will write it out. I'll pray for them before I began to manifest on the altar. No one day I was praying. Ananami, I'm British Kabamba, Bekamba. I just heard she's the one. Somebody said she's the one. I kept hearing she's the one. She's the one. She's the one. Ah! Why is it she's the one coming? I'm not asking for a woman now. But I know that the church means she. So I now switch my prayer. I started praying for the church. The body of Christ. Let the bridegroom come for the groom. You know, I, I rheumatized my prayer. And the Lord kept, my heart kept beating. She's the one, she's the one, she's the one, she's the one. I now pause. I said, Lord, this, she's the one. What do you mean? He now said, Ebu Olua. 
grace is your wife. Bear in mind that I didn't go to pray for wife. I didn't go to say, Lord, who is my wife? I'm bringing solution to some, a lady here now. I, I, God just said, she's the one. So I paused and I said, Lord, who is the one? What do you mean? He said, Grace and Bolua is your wife. Immediately that thing came because I was not ready for marriage. And I was not desirous of marriage. I've lived, I've lived the wasted years from the age of seven till I was 19. So woman was not something I was thinking of. Even though I'd invested a lot in, in praying towards that aspect of my life. But the day God was going to talk to me about it was on a normal day that I was just praying in tongues. Because I'd, I'd followed Kenneth Copeland. I'd followed Creflo Dollar. And in their messages, I followed, I followed um, uh, uh, um, Kenneth E. Hagin. And in their messages, they said that you should pray in tongues one hour a day. Right? So every day, that's my culture. For the past 20 years, I do that. And I said to myself, why would I be praying in tongues one day, one hour every day? I've got to move. So God gave me grace. I moved to three hours. I said, if the minimum, the minimum struggle of my prayer life is three hours, that is, I begin to gas after three hours. I say, okay, but let's say I don't tire. Right? So you push yourself, that you, 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 you push, and the way you can push yourself in this manner is because you are hungry. And so the Lord said to me, she's the one. I said, okay, no problem. Um, I'll, I, I'll leave the matter. I just left the presence of the Lord. But guess what? The fact that God gave me that interpreter, that interpretation, it stayed in my heart. The more I pushed it away, the more it grew. Recently, I met a man of God that was doing something. And the Lord asked him to do, the Lord just came and said, ask me for this. He was afraid. He was speaking in tongues. When God told him to ask him for that thing, he felt that God will never tell him to ask for that. You know why? Because it was too big a thing to ask for. God told him, ask me for the crowd. I want to give you crowd now. And that man refused. How many of you remember let me tell you the implication of taste and see. How many of you remember Acts of Apostles chapter 8, 9, chapter 10? The house of Cornelius. How many of you remember? The Bible says, taste and what? See that the Lord is good. Hmm. So, Uncle Sam, the Lord now appeared to Peter and he showed him unclean animals. Bear in mind that the person that appeared is what? Not an angel. Is the Lord capital letter L was what they used to render that word, and the Lord said, "Rise, kill and eat." What was his response? He didn't say no. He said, if if he even said no, perspective would have been given. He said, "Not so, Lord." That is, I know too well to be asked to eat. And God told him to eat how many times? Three times. And he said, "Not so." And then the sheet was taken off, and then he woke up. When he woke up, he was meditating over that dream. Is that not so? That meditation was what gave him mercy to still proceed. But help me, let me do an exegesis on that scripture for you a little bit. When God told him to stand up to eat, he said not so. God took away the sheet. And then the men that were going to look for him were already at the doorpost of the hotel. Huh? And while he's meditating, the people are at the door. And then his understanding came together. There is a level of God's knowledge that will become a challenge to your life if you are not progressive in him. There is a level of ideology, logic that you have captured in God that will become your undoing if you don't understand the flexibility of following him. So, one of the things that happened to this lady is our fathers told us to drink water here. You remember she mentioned their fathers. That our fathers, but you could see that she was willing to press more into God. Matter of fact, there were two dimensional pressings that she did. The first layer of that pressing was that she said, I, am, I sense you are a prophet of God. 
when the taste board was rising, you can see, you can see her progression in the taste. As she was testing, her taste board was being changed. As she drank of the water, a measure of that grace came. As she drank of that water, another measure of grace came. As she kept drinking and kept pressing, measures, apertures of the spirit were being opened. Were being, uh, the Lord was administering reality to her. So the first thing is, she came to the place of knowing him as a prophet. So at the point here, you see that Peter, you know, told him that the people at the door, taste and see that the Lord is good. While he was meditating, they took him back into that place. And they said to him, the people are downstairs, they've come to look for you. He now suddenly remembered the dream and he went. What is the implication? In Acts of Apostles chapter 9, God encountered a man called Saul unto salvation. In Acts of Apostles chapter 7, in chapter 9, Saul said, Lord, what will you have me do? The question is, who preached lordship to him? Why will he encounter Jesus? And the first thing he will say is, Lord, what will you have me do? He heard that language from the testimonial of Stephen. When they were stoning Stephen, Stephen was the one that he looked because there is only one religion, and Christianity is not a religion, it's a journey in God, but let me use the word religion. There is only one religion that says forgive, never punish the culprit, is Christianity. Christianity is the only religion that will tell you we don't fight with guns, they can shoot us, we don't shoot back. Christianity is the only religion that will tell you that when the enemy comes shooting at you, you stay there and keep preaching the gospel. Go through the persecution. So in John 5, he said, blessed are you when you are persecuted for my name's sake. Because persecution is not a minus, it's not a detour, it's not a deterrent to the purposes of God. Persecution is an enhancer. It enhances the resolve of a believer. So when you kill Stephen, you will get a Philip that will teleport. And in the place of Stephen, God will raise an erudite, a juggernaut, that will be able to withstand your knowledge feet for feet. He will take from among you and he will drop the spirit of Stephen. So he said, Lord, what will you have me do? Because he heard Stephen. That was the day salvation, the seed of salvation was planted. He began to say, how can we stone a man? And he kept saying, Lord, have mercy not on himself, but on the people that were stoning him. So that was his seed. So in nine, he encountered God. And God said, go somewhere. And then when you are there, I will commission you. So God called a brother. What's the name of that brother now? Ananias. He said, go to a street. Call what? Straight. There was a detailed analysis of where he was. He wasn't told to go to Las Vegas. That there is a man that prays within the casino. No. He was told that this man, his assignment is assignment of being straight. I've planted him on a narrow path. I've made his options narrow. Because his options will not be broad. His options will now become narrow. Because in the kingdom, the more you walk, it, the, your pathways begins to close on on you. You can't move to the left. You can't move to the right. You can only maintain a straight road. So God prepared him there. He said, when you get there, for he what? Pray it. Upon his praying, you will encounter him and then you will be able to bring him unto me. Hmm. So he got there, prayed for him, laid his hands and the Bible says, scales dropped off his eyes. Then we now came into verse 10. And in verse 10, the scriptures now said that God asked this man to rise up. He said, no, he, he wouldn't rise up to kill to eat. And then he went to the house of who? Cornelius. When he got to the house of Cornelius, what did he do? The Bible says he began to speak to them, even though he was afraid. He really didn't know what God was going to do. Please follow me. Leave those ones. You've seen them before. And I say we respect them, my brothers. And so, the Bible says, while Peter speak, what happened to them? The Holy Ghost landed on them. So he was amazed. Let me tell you the implication of refusing to taste when God asked him to taste. 
the implication was that Peter was supposed to be the father of the Gentile and the Jewish church. He was going to be the father. And any other person that would do the work, he would carry out fatherhood over him. But because he refused, there is a part of the prophecy. There is a part of the taste that he had. Somebody say taste. I said to you that the title of my message is what? The taste. What? Test. There is a part of the taste that he has tested. And I said to you that when we talk about test testing, we are talking about a knowing that comes to you. So, in the book of Matthew, Jesus was walking with them. And suddenly he turned and he said unto, him, unto them, Who do men say I the son of man am? And what did they say? Some say you are Elias. Some said that you are Isaiah. Some said that you are the prophet. Then he said unto him, You, who do you say I the son of man am? He said, Thou art the Christ. Number one, the son of the living God. So he looked at him and he said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you because there are revelations that flesh and blood can reveal. So what you just locked into, the spirit that brought this to you is the spirit of my father because up until now, nobody knows me as the anointed. Uh, this is the first time that the word Christ was being introduced into scripture. And it said Christ because that is the administrative department that furnishes the reality of Christ, the reality of the Father into our life. That's the office. And then he said Jesus. And that's the person. So you see, you will not only work with the person of Jesus, you will work with the office of Christ. Because it is in that office that we request for anything and then we receive. So when he, he said that, he went further. He said, you guess what, Peter? Upon your shoulders are the keys of what? The kingdom. Somebody say key. What do you use key for? So that was why he was the one that opened in Acts of Apostles chapter 2. He was the one, when he opened to the Jews, he opened it accurately, so he became their father. When he was going to open to Acts of Apostles chapter 10, he didn't open it well, because he said what? Not so, Lord. There are times that your experiences in God can become your danger. This is one of the reasons why you are not progressing in your test. Because you are the 99 version of yourself. What do I mean? You received the word 1999. You are still holding on to it. You are not going to ask the Lord, where are we regarding this matter? Because you must be a spiritual, intelligent believer. God may say to you today, rise up and go to the brook chariot. For I have commanded the raven to feed you. Who commanded him to go there? Answer me. I'm talking about taste test. Who commanded him to go there? Then the Bible says, and the brook dried up. How can God send me to a place and the brook way dry up? So if you are the type that go about this brook is dry, but God will feed me here. And God is saying, Austin, Austin, calm down. Wait. Austin, wait. I live you this is not god this is satan meanwhile when we ask you question you will say it was god that told me to come here in 1999 oh we're running bible study in my living room for three and a half years as rcn and one day the lord said to me i was praying on my own i didn't go to ask him because i know i felt at some point that our time has ended in my living room so okay let me give you where it was we did we made some chairs because the bible study dealt with my chairs in my parlor at times we are 70. so the bible study dealt with my chairs every time i see the chairs they are dirty so i changed the chairs so i told my i called all the pastors i said um the way this thing is going we need to look for another venue this place is small again one day i was praying the lord just came to me. He said, sure you know that you are telling them to leave because of your chairs because of these new chairs. Yes, it cost me some fortune. I said, Lord, I didn't know. He said, well, I'm telling you. Now that's why you told them to leave. So I called all the pastors. I now confessed. You see, if you, if you follow my messages, what you hear is who I am. I don't hide anything. If I lost, if I come here now and I'm lost in that door, if I enter here, I'll tell you. So I saw one baby who want to pray for me. Before I would teach. It is left for you to judge me. The thing is, I want to die well. And I want to go to heaven. Because the Bible says, let him that still see no more. 
So I told the pastor, see this thing. So as I was confessing, my wife also did like this. She said, even me, oh. <laughs> I said, so it's, it's a household sin. So we repented. When we repented, we said to ourselves, we will never talk about living here again. We, this place, if the house will crumble, let it crumble. So one day I was praying, because I was praying tongue a lot. And that's how I navigate, because I receive feedback. So God said, when are you leaving? I said, leaving where? God knows that we argue. He said, I have left. Locate me in the next place. Guess what, brothers and sisters? There is this road that Pastor Victor used to pass every day. The very day the Lord told me I have left, locate me in the next place. We used to pass that place. We never knew there was a venue there. My pastor was driving. He just raised his head and he saw it. And we moved there two weeks later. When God began to talk about taste and see, you cannot see until he begins to change your taste board. So she was requesting for that. So Peter's taste board didn't change, even though he had tasted before. But you see, the knowledge he had before stopped him. How will you feel if a prophet by the name Isaiah comes to you today and says, Oh God, put your house together for the Lord say you are coming back home. For thus says the Lord, and the Lord says, So shall my word be, shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I have sent it for, and it shall prosper the thing for which I have spoken it into. You see, the word will not return to him what? Void. But this day it returned. It returned on this particular day and it was hanging. So God said to him, when he left, Hezekiah turned to the wall. And Hezekiah began to speak to God about his labors with God. Remember, remember, remember. And God said, concerning the works of my hand, command ye what? Me. It's only in the purposes of God that you can speak to God directly. So God said, as, as Isaiah was going home saying, I am a prophet. And the joy of a prophet is when his word comes to pass. He said, I told you so. That this guy would die. While he was on his way, may God, may God tune your ear. May the Lord tune your ear to hear accurately. May God give you the heart that burns when you are in his presence. May you be able to walk on life coals and never recover. You see, you come to a place where your jokes are no longer jokes. Your jokes are, they are pilots into destiny. So he turned to him and said, see, Ezekiel just gave me a word of prophecy now. Go back to him. Don't only tell him he will leave. Tell him I'm giving him 14 more years. What does 14 mean? Double perfection. But you see, immediately he was giving 14 years, he began to misbehave. But the ball I'm showing you here is because there is a prophet that hears. There is a man of God that holds to the word of God. And when he held to the word of God, he kept going back to check what the Lord is saying. He kept going back to understand what the Lord is saying. Because in your test, you must, you must judge accurately for you to land well. So in that book of John, let me begin to round up. Theophilus is here already. So in that book of John, when that narration started and she said, you know what? Lord, give me this water to drink. <laughs> you cannot drink of my water. Everything I taught you was a reality in me. So now let's go personal. The way to taste is to go personal. Bring me your husband. Now, I've, 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 I've worked on your taste board. But for you to become this reality... Are we going to your life? <laughs> Somebody said dealing. Oh, we are about to excavate things now that nobody knows. Nobody had known masturbation. We will excavate it. Lying, we will excavate it. Cheating, we will excavate it. Bearing false witness, we will excavate it. I will give you all this water. But before I give you this water, beg i beg you let me go personal with you go bring your husband i told you god gave us boldness to approach him and she said i don't have a husband God, she warned jesus jesus said woman woman you have spoken the truth 
The truth is, you've been married to five men. Guys, who told you that there are no men to marry women again? I, I, one day I told God, I want you to reveal this woman to me in a vision. I want to see how pretty she is. Because you marry first one, come out. Another one marry you, five men. The Bible said, Jesus didn't say you were prostituting with them. You were what? You had five what? Husband. Legitimately. You know, I told you that time when we were talking. I'm bringing you to my, the cross of my message. I told you that time. I said, there are things you yearn for in marriage. Eh? One of it is, you know, ecstasy, right? A time comes that it dies. Your wife will look at you like this. There is no aggro. Because school fees is calling. When you don't, they near 40, you are thinking of, man, I need to buy my house. That thing, responsibility is calling. So he said to her, yes, woman, you are correct. One of the ways to bring you into the layers of testing to see, because the whole thing is, you have not tested if you don't see. You must see when you test that God is good. So he said to her, you used to have five men. What hour was he sitting on the well? How many did she arrive at? How many men? No, no, it's six. How many men did she arrive with? Six. No, she had five husbands and one other man she's living with now, making six. Jesus, how many? Seven. So the first five, I said I will interpret prophetically, so follow me. How many senses do you have? Namely, namely what? Who is bold enough to stand up? How many senses do you have? So, number one. Eh? So the Bible says that blessed are your eyes for they can see. So, you see, this is not the eye that God has given you. There is an inner eye. It's called the eyes of the spirit. Eh? So, when you see a woman like this, you, you should not be seeing her breast. That is if Christ has walked on your eyes enough. First look is allowed. As I'm looking like this now, it's allowed. But when I fix my gaze, I'm trying to paint a picture. That is when the spirit takes over and begins to create pictures in your mind. So he said, you are blessed. Your eyes are blessed. For what? They see. That's one. Number two? Uh -huh. He said, these eyes that see, he said, a seeing eye and a hearing ear, God make them, not give, not give, make them. So your ear will go through process. And then in the book of Revelation, he say, blessed is your what? No, let him that have an ear, hear. So this is not, it's not this one. It is an ear in the spirit, ear that has been fine-tuned tuned and tuned to be able to hear so he now said that the blessed eye and what the blessed ear god makes them both meaning that as you journey with god on your test test god will begin to walk on your senses where the, rest, the everything about your body will be invaded oh my god have you seen a preacher that will laugh and the laughter is a message i have a father when he laughs his laughter is a message. Your body will quake. God will take everything about your life and it becomes a ministration. You know why? Because God is forging, God is working on your five senses. What is the next one? Huh? What is it? But smell, Abby. What is that in the spirit? That's discernment. The ability to smell evil. You see, all of these things, I'm just using the five now before I come to six. God will take your senses. God will make you say that don't see from the physical because that which we see from the physical is temporal. But what we see in the spirit world is eternal. That your reality and the base point for judgment is not from here because there is a place called discernment. So God begins to work on your perception. God begins to work on your lines of sensing. The way you sense things. The way you respond to it. God begins to work on it. He said, go and bring your husband. And she said, I don't have. He said, you said the truth. I will work on your smell. I will work on your discernment. I will work on how you see. I will work on what again? How you taste. Alright? What again? 
Huh? So, it works on your emotions. You come to the place where your judgment is not by emotions. I was telling um, Akite Kape when we were coming. I said, there is something I love Apostle for. Apostle Arame is not emotional when he wants to take decision. <laughs> he will just tell you, I'm not going. Um, Ukbore, I'm not going. Sir, you are dressed like this. Let's go. He said, no, I'm not going. As I'm talking to you, I'm already pulling my shoe. And he will be pulling it. There was one he went to Kaduna to preach. And early in the morning, the people checked him into the hotel. And early hours of the morning while he was praying, the Lord said, what are you doing here? He said, I came to preach. Did I ask you to come? He just called me. He said, Ukbore, be at the airport and pick me up. I said, Papa, won't you tell the people? He said, who are the people? Who is stronger than God? I said, Papa, give them the courtesy of explaining to them what God said to you. He said, no. He's not emotional. But as God, we have it as he was packing his bag, they came. Say, said, Asa, what is going on? I said, ah, as you see me, I'm already in Lagos. I kid you not. That was what he told them. I'm already in Lagos. God told me, what am I doing here? I'm going. No, I'm sorry. Sorry. Don't feel bad. Um, you can get somebody else. He is responding to the command of God. Listen. A man that is emotional will never be accurate in his judgment. So God will work on the feelings. How you feel things. God will deal with pettiness. Being petty. Huh? God will deal with... Now, look at the way they are talking to me. It's because I don't have any husband again. Oh, it's because she's married. She's 32. It's not your fault. How old are you? How old am I? You are just 32. Eh? I'm 35. You are married. It's not your fault. Da. Ladies will not be free around you because you are not married. Anything they do, you are pet. You judge them. Is this thing working? You judge them. So God will deal with your feelings. That was why he said to John, he said, when you were young, you went wheresoever you wanted. Your emotion will tell you, do this. I go a fishing, you will go. A day will come. That one will hold you by the hand. They will lead you to where you don't want to go. So when your generation say, go to where you are celebrated, I pity you. Don't go to where you are tolerated. A truth from the pit of hell. Is it truth? A lie from the pit of hell. You don't go to where you are tolerated. You don't go to where you are celebrated. You go to where you are sent. Some time ago, a man of God called me to, to come and preach for him in Lagos. And they told me, my, 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 before, before I even said yes, they told me my honorarium on phone. Big money. Somebody say money. Five thousand dollars. No, be even naira. My feeding per day was going to be three fifty dollars. If my feeling had not died, I would fall for it. You can't taste until it changes your taste board. Because before you want to test him, you have test other things. So he said, even now you have the sixth man. What is six? By strength shall no man prevail. Six is the number of man. He said, so now you are going to give up your senses. You are going to give up your natural eyes. And you are going to give your eyes to me so that I will become your eyes. Just like Abraham gave his nationality to me just like abraham gave his household to me just like abraham gave himself to me you will walk out of this place you will become fatherless so that i can become your father you can you will become a man without a nation so that you can go through the city not knowing where i'm leading you to until you pick it by the spirit you know it was by the spirit he picked moriah it was by the spirit he saw that this is where he should what sacrifice Isaac. God never told him the place. So you can see a man whose senses have been developed. Whose senses in the spirit have been what? Developed. You can see at some point in the life of Paul, when Paul came into a city, a young lady said, these are they that teach us the truth. These are they that bring the gospel of salvation. The first day when it happened, he said, Omode, only Ikbe, your head correct. We are the leading pastors you saw well. As the guy kept hailing them one day, the spirit rose in his inside. It was not the first day he sensed it. 
It was not the second. They were not told how long. But the senses, you will see that even Paul, as high and mighty, Paul's senses were being developed. He was progressing in God. And then one day he sensed it. And he said, you know what? This is God. Now he's going to rebuke it. I remember once upon a time, a lady came to work for us at home. And every time they come to my house, I will tell them, come. Every time we get a help, I'll say, knee down. Repeat after me. My name is Austin. That's, she will use her name. My name is Deborah. She will say, my name is Deborah. As I come into this house, as I come into this house, I change alliance. I come under the government of this house. We have done it like four times. Three of them in the morning, when we wake up, their bag is by the door. They say they are going. We don't argue because we know. Whatever you came with, you can't work here. We have changed the government. So immediately we change the government. There is barricade of angels on the door. They will come. They will be seeing her, but she can't do anything. So the next day she says she's leaving. We'll say, carry your bag and go. What's the, next, the last one? That's all. So the sixth, and then Jesus became the seventh. I've explained the sixth, the order of man. The order of man is where your will is strong. Even Jesus went through it. Jesus went through the order of six at the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, you know what? I want to bring salvation, but I don't want to die again. Oh, you didn't know? That's why I'm breaking the scripture for you small, small, so that you can get context to it. He said, Lord, if this cup can pass over me, when he saw the death, he said, this cup should pass over him. Heaven was wailing. Heaven was crying. His will came to the front burner against the will of God. But in the midst of that, he remembered that humanity was hanging on the depth of his death. He said, not my will, but your will. You know, Jesus has been praying before that time. When you go to Luke chapter 20, go and study. That Jesus had been praying before that time, but the Bible said, immediately he said, not my will, but your will. That was when the groaning spirit came. It was in that season that God moved him to another realm in the spirit. Because that was when angels came and strengthened him. You see, you, you, you want strength, die to your will. The greatest enemy of revival is not Satan. It's man's will. What is affecting your advancement is not the devil. It's not even your family household. Because God is capable of telling you about your family. I was 21 when God told me what my dad did at 21. Nobody knew up until that time, until I went to confront him. You impregnated a lady at 21. I said, Koi, who told you? I said, God told me in school. I was going to be 21 the next day, and God said, if you go in like this, you're in trouble. God can walk you into the maps of patterns in your family, and God will use you to destroy them. You know why? Because you are yielded. If you are too strong, he can't do anything with you. God wants weak men so that he can turn them to something else. So that when your father looks at you, he say, architect, bear. Wow. You are a good family man. Oh. I'm proud of you. When he looks at you, he sees an improved version of himself. Because you allow God to take you by the hand. There is nothing on earth that should say my marriage should work. I was not taught by a father that showed me love. I was not taught by a mother that showed me love. I was taught by a brutal father who beat my mother from the age one that I was till age 17. Beat my mom till the time she fainted that she could not talk for six months. That was the kind of man that gave back to me. I had no hope to be a good husband because every son will take after his father. But there is a father. There is a father. When I looked away from my father, I refused to taste of that test. I refused to partake of it. And I went to God. I said, God, you know something? I am afraid for me. This was what I told God, Uncle Ape. I said, Lord, I'm afraid for me. Number one, I am a sex addict. I don't know if I can keep a relationship without sex. Number two, I can beat for Africa. I don't know if I'll beat a woman, but I am afraid for me. Can you help me, oh God? 
and then I stumbled on the scripture. For the Lord God shall help me. Therefore will I not be ashamed. For he has set my face like a flint. And he said, I will give you the grace never to beat your wife, not one day. This is 13 years. I have not lifted my hands. And I will never lift my hands. And I stayed as a, as a celibate until I got married. This is a young man that was on edge sexually. I was active from the age of seven until I was 19 sexually. I can't count how many women I've slept with. That is why I say you have tasted some things. And for you to be able to test and see is because your taste board must change. God must take on you. Jesus must go personal with you. He will come from the place of a general context to the place where he will individuate what he's doing. He will go personal with you. He will open you up not because he wants to shame you. He will open you up not because he wants to bring you down. He will open you up because in opening you up, he will give you strength. In opening you up, he will give you ability. You know what? People look at me and they say, how do you talk about your past like this? Don't you think, I say there is no sin I have not confessed before the Lord. There is nothing I have not said. And there are many of those girls that I slept with. Most of them are my spiritual children today. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The reason why you are not deep enough is because you are always with what Papa said, what Mama said. That is good. Jesus did it with the Samaritan woman. Jesus was saying, I am he. Jesus was telling her. He was exegeting with her. He was giving her the picture of who he is. But you know what? Immediately he caught her attention. He went personal. Can somebody bow his head and say, God, come personal with me from tonight. Come. I want you to be personal with me. Comb every aspect of my life. Jesus, comb her senses. Jesus, comb her sexuality. My time is against me. I would have shown you how Jesus walked on those five senses. When he was done with this lady, she went. Jesus captured one woman that tasted. And she said, come and see the man that has said to me. What was it? He said, taste and what? See. When she tasted, what happened? She went and said, come and see. There is a prophet. There is a son of God who spoke to me. I don't know where you are at. I don't know what the issues are. But Jesus is saying to you, come, taste and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I want you to experience my Lordship. My Lordship, come unto me, O ye that are heavenly loving, and I will give you rest. How? Because you will take upon you my yoke, and you will walk the walk with me, and you will learn of me. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I don't know where you are at. I don't know the level of your walk. Maybe for you, your senses, your cerebral ability has impeded your work with God. If you don't put it together, you don't take the step. If you, under, if you don't understand what God is saying from the humanistic view, you don't want to take step. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. I tell you today, come to God. Come and drink. Come and drink. The Bible says come drink. Come drink without money. Come buy without money. That is the kingdom that we have. Our purchase is not by money. Our purchase is by the redemptive blood of Jesus. Am I communicating to somebody? I want you to ask God, walk on my taste board. I no longer want to struggle with you anymore. I submit myself. Take over my lips. Take over my tongue. Take over everything, oh God, that I am doing. I want to submit to you. I suspend my life. Take my life. Run my life. Run my destiny. I want to taste. I want to see that the Lord Lord is good. I want to see that the Lord is good. I want to test. I want to see that the Lord is good. As I test, I press into you. I press. Can you be intimate with the Lord? It's one step to be personal and there's another to be intimate. And you can ask him to make you worthy of intimacy. Jesus, I 
Elaton Kofros Ketava Lighter, Betwa Beskote Velante Mohos, Sepote Velato Precos Kete, Maleto Becas Kepo Livetwa, Brucas Ketavante Mohoske, Melanto Premu Velastica, Zufivi Capo, Mesto Lato Cambe, Prakta Casketo Biliata, Ambre Beto Cobascapo, Ambre Beteskebe Dobinata, Ambre Cobosco Tobina. Melato Besaso Capri, Mosti Sese, Opre Pocopo, Apeso Sanka, Mento Haviketua, Wasekari and the Bo, Ayapopo. Can somebody dare to be intimate with the Lord? Dare to be intimate with Him. What that means is that you have to make sure that you are isolated from the person sitting close to you. Because intimacy is never a public thing. Our father just left here and he told us how that Jesus dealt with a personal matter. Yes. Can you be more intimate with him? In other words, can you be more personal with him? Obaraka basila matoke perute kepo Sakenuka palatomina Yeto begenika suka mende Aluka beni afadadi Yeto borokopo Zwebebedovi I want to be personal with you Oh I don't know But I just want to be Personal with you Make me worthy of deeper intimacy Ia peruta taina Ia tapari akahapai a paria 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 a paria 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 a paria a paria a paria a paria paria he at a paria he at a tola tataya a peru tataya aya pa he at a pora he at a pora he at a pora he at a pora he pa a pe pe radia he a pore he a pore he a pe mata I want to be intimate with you Only you my Jesus I want to be intimate with you Hey Only you my Jesus Spend my life Spend my life Lord I reap the nations for you. Spend my life. Spend my life, Lord. I reap the nations for you. Oh, I want to be intimate with you, oh, Kapana. Hey, only you, my Jesus, oh, Kavava. I want to be intimate with you, Are. Oh my God, Yatwa. Only you, my Jesus. Spend my life. Spend my life, Lord. I best suffer. I reap the nations for you. So see you. So see you. Philos Aketovena. I reap families for you. Oh, spend my life, spend my life, Lord. Yes, I reap the nations for you, Apokatia. I wanna be intimate with you, Oshokape, Melateno Sikalaita. Only you, my Jesus, Abarukaitava. I wanna be intimate with you, Rebecca. Let of Jesus survive Only you, my love, Ayatwe, Brako Seven Ate. I wanna be intimate with you, Rusete Abai, Abenato Diata, Iyato Benetia, Odevia. Can you be intimate? Oh, sake levo riata babo. Mina nato ke mena siane. Remina do ke skona mina fela. Ames koteli ame. Usizi nae. Kuta mene fili akone. Asmini vili tikigo. Okige ya naname. 
Sabri nu amite ne kai kota. Mesuzeme. Hey, Jesus. Here, Lord, here. Deeper, deeper, Lord. Excavate what needs to be excavated. That I'll be worthy of the point in the sea. Kapi no si sakaya. Kapi mote kaske soli. Me light up pre motande. Oh, si zelele. Me na moko ya ne me tele me na. Me skadi ababori ante. Se me me ne na no na. Ela me mo. Arya bebe so sekaye. Oh, my God. I want to be intimate with you Only you my Jesus I want to be intimate with you hmm. Only you my Jesus hey. I want to be intimate with you Only you my Jesus I want to be intimate with you Only you my Jesus Hey Come near on a majeli governano Abrani a soki diale Monsi kame na vili mojeveno Uriano can see Liveno, Abre Quadi Gajodi Lema, Mescusi Lemo Jaliade no Parale, Lana no Jagabalamo, Arezo Se, Arezo Mina Cadiamo, Esteno Cudile, Unimano, Aye, Scusi Zile de Roma Taela. Oh Jesus, 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 Jesus! Come here now, me just come here, me me not fear not to kill it. Hey, who tell me my name a border? Carry a zuzi the kana, the general here. Who could ni ngangu ni kene to? Ani e di e dosese. Be intimate. Be intimate. Be intimate with him. Be intimate. Be intimate with him. It's just you and him. Our father said, if you must taste, you must be personal. Hey. He must touch personal things. And if you are willing, he will go intimate. Oh, yeah, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hey. Are you long for intimacy? Long for intimacy. Long for intimacy. Hey. Oh. You will taste deeper things. Not just when you are personal. But intimate. Intimacy. And if, if he must get intimate with you. He will excavate. He will excavate. He will. He will purge you so that you will be worthy of him. He will remove. He will take away. Oh, many a natwa gaga ine nuane. Seli a magaruti eke na kuada. Muche mi ni bina nyonga ome na tiame. Ami e jone ke kiode. Aprenio. Aprenio, Aprenio, que o mundo é cujia, me suzi que lo lele.
Jesus. Hey. I've been offered to a deity, and now I am a sacrifice. The life that I live is not my own. I've been offered to a deity, and now I am a sacrifice. The life that I live is not my own. Mm. I've been offered to a deity. And now I am a sacrifice. The life that I live is not my own. I've been offered to a deity. And now I am a sacrifice. The life that I live is not my own. Yes. And I know Konya Tete Benafino. He can hear the Tronia Mekapai. Akapai Lemote. Menanjo Kabil. Kabiane Fefeteni. I am ready. Oh. Oh, 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 it's just me and you, 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 consume Lord, consume, consume, consume oh Lord, be thou unto me according to thy word, be thou unto me according to thy word, consume Lord, Kemo saina mahapea Resusa mande Munia mamo Ebno mimo vua daya Yepto polife tuwa pea Mesusa nde Nenyanto Geriuve de adobe Sababua Abrapone Abrapone Yataparia Ataparia Ataparia Abaparia tababo Abinova juwe deiti and now I am a sacrifice. The life that I live is not my own. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and now I am a sacrifice. The life that I live is not my own. Yes. Spirit consume. Consume. Consume me more and more. As I consume more. Consume. Consume you more and more. Spirit consume, consume, consume me more and more. As I consume more, consume, consume you more and more. I've been offered to a deity. Scriptures call him the father of all spirits and the God of all flesh. Oh. Your mota by a camba, men your cover your double, men so kindly, kai kapapala, papala topia, ante bokopoa, eble monte zaida, garea papo, sebe mataka, abamato lata, abamato lata, yata papala taka yata papopo, eble tepe buya tande, yata papapo, hey! Yes, I speak spirit. I don't speak English. I speak life. I speak life. For he has made my tongue the pen of a ready writer. Hey! I sing spirit. I sing life. <laughs> I sing spirit. Holy Ghost. You are not Pentecostal. You are not Orthodox. Teach us your ways. Holy Ghost. You are not Pentecostal. You are not Orthodox. Teach us your ways. Holy Ghost, you are not Pentecostal, you are not Orthodox. Teach us your ways. Holy Ghost, you are not Pentecostal, you are not Orthodox. Teach us your ways. <laughs> oh, I sing spirit. I don't speak your language. I speak thine. 
I speak spirit. I don't speak English. I speak life. Mm. For he has made my tongue the pen of the ready writer. Oh. Hey! He has made us ministers, ministers of the spirit and not of the letters. Because Kaparato Kamalaita and Bante Kopapuataya, Mesukataina and Beburetai, Susana Menakwa Katai, Epoko Palataya, Ekakakakakayatapa, Ratapakayatakapa, the Yadakapakapalataka, the Yadakapakapalataka, the Yatwa, Erai, Paratosasa, Epelataya. Shabenata lighter, Abusa seal, Rate tire, Ebaba Baba 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 Intimacy, Lord. Deeper intimacy. My only desire. Oh, that I be lost in you. Until there is no me. Until I am gone. Oko miya kabia kame, kabia kabia kababua, mena kabia mande, odi eveni amonje bahapa, apai no bojo mama, emojo mama, emojo mama, emojo mama ina mana juada, e ya dabia na fatiada, e ya tapaya, e ya tapaya, abrai, e ya papa, e papa ratayana. Be intimate with him. Forget about me. Just be intimate with him.
for I'm on thousands Ten thousands My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands <laughs> Oh yes you are Yes, you do. Ah, Respond, respond to him. Respond to him. Nothing, nothing else makes sense. Nothing. There's no sense anywhere except in intimacy. I assure you that there's no sense anywhere except when you are intimate with him. Knowing that he has you just as you have him. Until my only case is you. Spirit keep brooding over me. Till I am lost in you Until I'm deep and lost in you Spirit keep brooding over me Till I am lost in you mm. Until my only gaze is you Spirit keep brooding over me Till I look more like you mm. Until I'm deep and lost in you Spirit keep brooding over me Till I am lost in you Till I am lost in you hmm. Hmm. You, you, you. Oh, oh. For you to taste You must be personal And I would like to add there are some things you will not taste until you become intimate. Can you be intimate with him? Do you really desire him? What do you want? Why do you want what you want?
is my Lord my goal is to see your face and hear you say well done mm. hallelujah mm. I'll keep singing the song of saints till I reach my home mm. hallelujah I'll keep singing the song of saints. Mm. No glory in this world. No great name here for me. No glory in this world. My great reward is you. To all who trade it for gold. Oh, I jam it for Konya Kefelemo. I met Osesiamo. Kemo de Mitiku Yekavai. Mene fande de boko Ake momo dedi O dedi ne me boke te Ke bo de kokanka Uka me Uka mine konke Uka kane mo papa hi Papa hi na mo Resko tamina hane Ske so si le marias Maru veve hiya Membe mu ni amuta Buki te Monsaso ke premo Yelitwa Yelitwa be Abruke ke kokaka 
He and I know. I bet not tardy at all. Hey, hey, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thou son of David, look upon thy handmaid. Oh, Kemi Okaga, Hila Kunga, Akunga Yakwanga, Kwanga Igo Paga, Gugia Gabe, Akwalo, Babo, 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 Saila Beria Tande. Yalamo Yatwa Mati Kofabe Sabinanto Baka Monzomba Evwanu Munja Buva Fenio Potato Oh my head shall thou exalt like the horn of the unicorn by the Boba Baba Abanamu Babua Yanamande Hula Oh my horn will thou make strong so much so that the enemy will not be able to break. Make sure Mitai, Mitai Latam Bepoa, Abua Nati Abapala, Abapapapapaya Tapa, Ipapapapataya, Lash us as Ep as Upapai. Oh, hey, Jesus, Amerio Monga Sai Kabaya. Selemo, yes, yes, indeed, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Indeed, I have a bow, I have a bow, I have a bow, Rebapo, Mendolampena, Fai, a blunt of Bokovia, I have a bow, pour me out, Lord, pour me out, pour me out, Lord, I have a bow. Ah, as an offering, yato bar yatabo zevavo. I needed to be personal with him. Be personal. Forget about your feelings. <laughs> Forget about me. I'm not here for you. It's a matter of intimacy. And no third party is allowed. Sorry. Sorry, you can't come in. Sorry. It's a matter of intimacy. And it's just for two. It's just for two. I'm sorry you can't come into my space. I don't want to come into yours either. Balai kobo saela mande, samande samande, samande kuriya mande, kuriya basaka la, sabe pruka paila. I was sick at Tande. I'm the boss. Keluta. Eka Brasketwa. Be intimate with him. Be intimate with him. Sorry you can't come into my space. The space is just for two. I don't want to come into yours either.
but as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we can. Hey, hey, we'll be blessed because we can. It's a confirmation of all, all that has happened here tonight. We'll be blessed because we I'll be blessed because I came. I'll be blessed because I came. I'll be blessed because. from this kind of moment. You don't recover from this kind of time. I don't want to keep us here a bit longer than now. Tomorrow we will congregate by 9 a.m. And we'll be having a worship time of one hour with Theophilus from 9.30 to 10.30. I'm, I'm being specific so that you know what time to come in, right? And we are going to be very, very particular about tomorrow morning because we, we want that video and that coverage to go as widely as possible, right? So tomorrow we're going to be having a time, a worship time with Theophilus from, from 9.30 to 10.30. And then we'll receive um, Reverend Austin Tomorrow is actually for is a minister's retreat, but I encourage and indulge you to come, right? And if you have a sense of calling upon your life, either for to become a missionary, to become a minister of the gospel, in music, or in whatever, I will encourage you to come. Because I have been praying about this meeting. And particularly, not to, not to say because Theophilus is here, but I feel there's something Theophilus has that he needs to give out tomorrow. I don't know what it is. He's a young person, biologically, but he's a captain. Huh? I was, in his, I was somewhere and the, his, the music was playing, and I asked the person, I said, do you know who is singing? He said, no. I just enjoy the music, that whenever I'm listening to this song, See, my head is correct. The person just downloaded YouTube and was listening. He doesn't know Theophilus. But I left there excited. I was in a pair's office. That's the song that is played on autoplay. In my car. In my office. In my bedroom. There's something that his songs does to you. Right? Do you agree with me? Uh, for me, if I want to think out, outside the box, that's where I go to. So I feel there's something he has got that he needs to deliver, needs to give. To It's not material. I mean, there's something. Come and partake of that thing tomorrow. Hallelujah. Please come and partake of it tomorrow. And tomorrow evening, we will have the power night. Apostle Gideon is around, actually, but he's having a meeting um, online and um, with um, a community, so he won't be able to join us today. But he's around. He's in town. 
they came in together. And I want to say thank you, Theophilus, for coming. He just finished his program this morning. Um, he had a personal, his, his you know, annual program, and he still decided to come for us. Please put your hands together for Theophilus. And I want you to appreciate these guys that also come along to minister with Theophilus. Please put your hands together for them. If there's anything you need to be praying for, see, 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 if you want to see, if there's anything you need to be praying for, so you be praying for the safety of these people. All right? As they travel by road, travel by air, that God will keep them in the name of Jesus Christ. In your generation, you, ask, you have somebody like this. You should be glad. Eh? Somebody wrote on Facebook one day. He said, I am... He said, I thank God that in my generation, I saw Ronaldo and Messi. I'm like, okay. Me, in my generation, I'm happy that I met people like Apostle Arome, Apostle Gideon, Theophilus Sunday, in my generation, Nathaniel Bassi. Imagine that I came after they have gone. They will not be telling, we will not be reading about them. No. I am happy that I saw them. You know that man that saw Jesus after he was born? What's his name? Simeon. He said, now, he said, my eyes have done what? I've seen. So that let thy servant depart. It's a generational matter. You don't understand what has happened there. It was not a normal statement. That man, his longevity, his longevity was premised on seeing the birth of a child. The child he saw did not preach. This child he saw, did not, he just saw it. That was the endorsement. He said, now nah, I can go. Because whatever we were doing to this point, the person that we continue from here has come. As a child. Tomorrow I encourage you to come, right? Um, tomorrow evening also we will be announcing the, the, the grant award. We had... We had um, the pitching and, you know, granting stuff that happened um, two months ago or three months ago. I can't remember now. And then um, we have somebody also who God has, you know, favored, and that will be done tomorrow by um, Apostle Gideon Odoma himself. Um, good news. Pastor Colonia's wife has given birth. <laughs> Put your hands together. So, it's one of the reasons why you're not seeing him. He's now doing daddy's duties. <laughs> Please, send them a message congratulating them. Right? If you want the account number, ask me, I will give you. Why are you smiling? Ask me, I will give you the account number. Send something to them. Visit them. Now, the baby needs diapers. Buy for them. Huh? That's how to visit People who just give birth. What can we say to Reverend Austin? Please put your hands together and appreciate God for Reverend Austin. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. I don't know what to say, but his heart of the heart of sacrifice that he has is, is unequal, is unmatched. Is unmatched. Is unmatched. Um, I will tell you more about him maybe tomorrow, but he's unmatched. The things that he does for the kingdom is not. Let's leave it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, our chairman of board, board of trustees is here, Architect Ape. Please put your hands together for <laughs> the chairman of the, of the board of trustees for Fortress. And I once again I want to appreciate my friend, Pastor Silas. Thank you, sir. Silas Adanu is here, all the way from the United Kingdom. We were in the same secondary school, and then we were in the same university before he left for the United Kingdom. Um, thank you for coming. He's a great minister of the gospel. You need to know. We were in secondary school, he was in, we were in GS3 or so, and then we were having FCS. Then some, one voice just came from the background. I turned. I knew that that voice from that day was going to go far. That's Silas Omoha. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming.
He is ministered very, like, he's one of the notable um, gospel ministers, you know, across Redeemed Church, across Europe, across the United Kingdom. He's one of such, and very humble indeed. Um, thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you, Fortress Choir. Please put your hands together for them. Thank you. God bless you all. Please stand to your feet. Let's pray. Eternal Father, we thank you. I will give you praise. We ask that as your children are released to go home, take them back home safely. Take them back to destination in the name of Jesus. And for all the blessings we have received, we ask that they are internalized. We ask that we profit from them. We ask that they find root downwards in the name of Jesus. We ask that we become an embodiment. We become an expression of the things that you have taught us tonight in the name of Jesus. We, be, we ask out these things. We ask that these things become our attitude, our character, our testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father. And as we convey tomorrow, bring us safely in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you came with an offering, you could just drop it um, when, when we close. So surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you and shalom.